The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back. We're here, EMC World 2014. You're on theCUBE. It's our fifth year of coming to EMC World. We're excited to be here. We're so excited that we brought not one, but two cubes. First time in the history of the company. Double the pleasure, double the fun, double the insight, double the guests. So we're excited and we're, uh, we've got a great guest lined up, so we're going to jump into it. But before we do that, I'm going to introduce you to my host for this segment. Steve Keniston, the storage alchemist. Great to be here, EMC World Live 2014. Uh, we have, a, as Jeff was saying, we've got a great guest, Jeremy Lawrence, Director of IT for Eclipse Aerospace. So let's just level set with everybody. Jeremy, first give us a little bit of insight to what uh, Eclipse Aerospace is and does. Eclipse Aerospace, uh, we are manufacturers of the world's first very light jet, the Eclipse uh, 550. It's a twin engine jet. Um, the thing flies at 41,000 feet. Uh, Sips fuel at about 59 gallons an hour. Sips fuel, I Sips, like it's that the expression. Most, it's the world's most fuel efficient <laughs> jet. Um, travels at uh, 430 miles per hour and uh, seats about five plus pilot. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a business tool. It's a little time machine, um, but features inside that aircraft are things you won't see anywhere except uh, maybe uh, commercial jets or fighter aircraft. So uh, for general aviation, it's a pretty magical design. And you pretty much created a new category. It's a very revolutionary product. People have been talking about it for a very, very long time. Right. There, is, there, is there another very light jet, or you're the only very you know, light jet? Are, we have our competitors, uh, you know, Embraer, uh, the Phenom. Uh, but in our particular category, there's a really narrow little window for our price point. And uh, we think we're going to succeed very well in that space. So. And when did they finally start shipping? It was relatively soon, or recent, the excuse me. The 550s, uh, the first ones have just uh, sold, and we've uh, we've moved several out of production uh, in the last quarter. So, and uh, you know, the order book is still there and still coming in. So, it's uh, we're making airplanes. Um, we bought the assets of uh, Eclipse Aviation, which was a bankrupt firm, and we inherited that design and uh, all of their work, and a lot of that IT transformation that we went through with uh, EMC's products um, came out of that, uh, that bankruptcy. So talk about the role of IT. You've got mm -hmm. manufacturing, you've got aerospace engineering, you've got traditional IT uh, tasks and chores that you're responsible for. What's your group look like? Yeah. What, uh, what are you well, working it's on? Well, it's a big mixed bag, you know, we have, um, uh, a very small staff in IT to support uh, a large manufacturing operation, and the you know the complexity is tremendous. You know, if you can imagine what it takes to pull all those pieces together. Um, we don't really manufacture so much as we source a large supply chain all over the world. You know, so getting supply quality, uh, all of the SAP manufacturing operations pulled into one location for final assembly in Albuquerque is really what the company is doing. Um, from an IT perspective, we've uh, we virtualized everything that we inherited from the former company. When we bought the assets, uh, I worked for the investors who bought those assets. Everything was as is, where is, and uh, no instruction manual. And uh, yeah, we had to figure it out. So as you uh, went through that process, what were some of the challenges that uh, initially challenged you out of the box, and then if you look back now that you've gone through that acquisition process and kind of brought IT together a little bit, looking over your shoulder, what might you do differently? What can our practitioners learn from uh, what you guys have done? You know, in our particular situation, we really didn't have a choice except to fully virtualize the entire company. Um, we started with, I had uh, three computer rooms, um, 28 rack positions, uh, air conditioners in various stages of functionality in most places, and uh, 200 plus servers. Uh, and all of the intellectual property for the entire company hanging by a thread. Things were end of life, end of service, and um, really no one wanted to talk with us on the phone because they equated us with the, uh, the former company. Uh, but, uh, so we didn't really have much of a choice. We virtualized all of it and uh, put that into one V-block and then um, started backing it up with the Avamar uh, disk backup systems. Awesome, and then how, how, many, how many people are on your team, did you say? Right now we have 12. 12. Right, we're doing the work that a team of 60 used to do. Um, that really comes down to application specialists with uh, product lifecycle management, then we have application specialists around SAP, each of them with their own unique specialty, and uh, two really rock and roll and system administrators who really uh, run the IT infrastructure and our uh, help desk triage security, um, uh, 
it's a really great group, and we're getting a lot done with uh, minimal stuff. So, how recently did you complete that full integration? Uh, actually, we completed this about uh, three years ago. Um, this was uh, we were an early VBlock customer, got things going uh, pretty quickly, and uh, we've been now we're untangling the application infrastructure. You know, initially it was just let's secure that hardware and intellectual property, let's lifeboat that stuff out of its existing hardware, and uh, now it's untangling the application infrastructure, the process by which you manufacture and restarting an airplane factory. Um, we're talking about like you know tomorrow in manufacturing terms. That's really uh, it was a, a big task. And uh, now we're just waiting for that order book to ramp up and go hockey stick, and we can expand right into it. And how long it, did all that take? When did you take over the assets? Um, this was about, uh, see, I started after the f this company took over those assets. So it was about 2010 I began. And um, the entire virtualization process, you know, from decision to purchase uh, to actually getting down to the physical to virtual migration, 95% of our servers we migrated in uh, about a month. And then uh, the remaining 5% we did over the next three months. Uh, but we, uh, we were able to virtualize all of SAP, and then we went after our product lifecycle management. Uh, and some of our application managers were still waiting to get back to me about whether they thought this would be a good idea or not. And we'd been running for four months solid. <laughs> you know, it was no insult to them, but it was a lot of nail biting. And once we virtualized it, we realized it was a snap, and it just runs. So you've done a lot of virtualization. We've had a, a few different manufacturing customers on before. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys uh, uh, gone to VDI? We're actually, VDI isn't an application that fits our particular business model. We have a lot of uh, very mobile users. You know, they're out uh, managing supply chain, getting onto the shop floor, and it's a lot of pick up and go with laptops. Sure. So you talked about untangling that application. It's kind of the, mm -hmm. the next step that was in that process. And then did you go through a virtualization process of those applications as well? Uh, well, it was physical to virtual migration of the server infrastructure, and uh, those all being served out of the V block. Uh, that was uh, yeah, that was basically what it was. It was a physical to virtual migration, but this was a boot from SAN environment, and so we had to pull that storage over as well, and start to look up how do you back up 60 terabytes worth of SIF shares. You know, so we had to look into the DM NDMP accelerators, um, and it's it's working extremely well. I mean. The quality of life that uh, my system administrators and the rest of the staff get is that's really kind of the big win. Um, I've worked jobs before where it's 24 7 on call all year, and that's awful. Um, it's not happening for what we're doing. We're doing, you know, uh, updates in the midday, um, you know, kind of serious heavy lifting, shutdown, Labor Day type things, and uh, getting it done. Well, you know, it's funny, it's funny that you say that. One of the questions we like to ask the practitioners are mm -hmm. is, you know, what keeps you up at night, right? And for you to preempt the fact that you know you actually have raised the quality of life for, for folks in your shop is, is a really good thing, but I gotta believe, okay, there is that one little nagging thing, so what, what would that be? That one nagging thing, um, you know, it comes down to more of uh, facilities. You know, my actual hardware, IT infrastructure, isn't bugging me. Um, the aptitude and attitude of my employees doesn't bug me. Um, they're happy with what they've got to work with. Um, they can sandbox environments in SAP super fast. You know, uh, test things out, um, test dev uh, environments. You know, the ability to rapidly provision something without waiting, you know, four months while we decide on its IP address and things like that. Um, the thing that are keeping me up at night probably is I'd be a little more secure with different facilities. But um, you know, the ones we've got are great too. You know, that's they're well monitored. Uh, but it's really, I'd say it was a facilities thing. If I was going to be nervous, it isn't the hardware, and it's not uh, the software or the product. Jeff, I have to say, that's probably one of the first times IT isn't keeping IT up at night. Yeah. <laughs> I, this is the coolest character in IT, uh, I think, that we've ever talked to on the team. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I guess when you're flying at 500 miles an hour at 41,000 feet, you have other things to worry about, and hopefully the IT is working. So, Precisely. So you said you had to virtualize really as out of necessity to kind of take what was there and put it in a, in a nice, functional yeah. package. Package. How has that now enabled you to kind of grow the business? You said the, the, the order book is full and, and growing, and you know, kind of how is that helping you to manage your growth? And then what are you looking at to do next now that you're not kind of mending and fixing, but actually sounds like a relatively stable 
a stable state. Yeah, that was the, uh, the what I was really shooting for is that I didn't want I did not want uh, information technology to Eclipse Aerospace to be the the rate limiting step. You know, I didn't want someone to you know say, hey, you're the speed bump when it's you know something happens and we really have to take off and get going. So uh, getting stabilizing that infrastructure so we weren't fighting our own tools, getting the engineers working on a um, uh, reliable platform was my main goal. Yeah. Which is which is important, and that's that's often described as uh, an intended benefit. Right. But it sounds like you know you you pretty much uh, you've executed it pretty well, which is terrific. You know, further to that, it's um, a lot of it's still triage. You know, because we we took over the assets of a great design by the former company, and trying to figure out all of the former processes are not necessarily how we want to do things. So it's a lot of constant triage where you pick up a process or a piece of software and say, you know. Is this relevant to us now, the way we want to manufacture jets? Do we keep it? Do we archive it? Do we discard it? Do we modify it? Um, and having everything virtualized gives us a lot of latitude for test and development environments so we can vet things really quickly. So we've talked about jets. We've talked about IT. Mm -hmm. Jeremy, what, uh, is this your first EMC world? How many times have you been here? This is my second EMC world. Second EMC right. world. And uh, give us a little insight. What have you found that you like? What's interesting? Why, why do you like coming here? Why should someone else come here? Um, boy, the big kick for me is to see uh, just how broad the, I don't know, I want to say the, um, what's the right word? The, uh, the environment is for, for uh, other resellers. You know, it's, uh, it's so many complementary technologies that are out here. Um, that's exciting to me. Um, things that are happening in high performance computing, that's one of my old loves, and um, seeing that start to grow. Um, the uh, Isilon acquisition, um, you know, that was actually very cool, and getting a closer look at that. Um, it's uh, storage seems to drive more and more. So uh, for anyone who wants to be at MC World, it's the place if you're into that converged technology. It's really starting to happen. So Jeremy, another big thing we talk to uh, IT executives a lot, and, and, and the other big thing that comes up a lot is kind of, you said, don't be a speed bump, you know, kind of get get out of the way, but also really start to think like, uh, like you've got a seat at the business table, really start to be part of the competitive advantage of the company. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how that's worked for you. Um, it sounds like you got a really small staff, so clearly these are not a bunch of fix-it guys that like just to run around and fix it and then go hide. Uh, <laughs> no. You don't have enough of them, right? Yeah. So talk a little bit about how IT uh, in general, and you specifically with your implementation, has enabled you to take kind of a seat and contribute to the competitive advantage of the company. You know, the contribution in, uh, in a lot of ways, uh, if it's not air or water inside a business, it's computers and networks. You know, almost every business now is, you know, we're not going to go to paper. There's no drafting table anywhere. It's an entirely digital design. Um, that stability and uptime uh, gives us, a, we're not actually fighting our own systems. And so, you know, you hire bright people in IT. I like to hire techies who can talk. Everybody in the entire organization has got some aptitude in other areas. And where they're not, mired in repetitive tasks or um, dueling, uh, you know, impossible hardware scenarios, uh, I can use that creativity um, to assist in other organizations, you know, where it's a service group, it's a service organization. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have our sticking points around security sometimes or um, uh, style, but uh, it allows us a lot of flexibility. Any new, uh, new initiatives on the horizon? What's next? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of refining process, I think. Um, and see new initiatives for Eclipse and as a company in general. Yeah, for you, for um, you and the team. It, clearly, you're moving from, you know, a lot uh, often talked about company in the mm -hmm. press becoming the new category of these of these jets. Now you're starting to ship in production. Right? I assume that there's going to be service and maintenance as as you know, a larger percentage of those things are out in the field and. You know, probably the, the data requirements, the systems requirements, the types of stuff that you're going to have to support, I imagine will change. You know, we've added a lot of features. Our engineering and design teams have added features to the aircraft that make it a lot more attractive. Uh, things like auto throttles, um, anti-skid brakes, uh, synthetic vision, enhanced vision. Uh, you know, these are uh, things that you're just not going to see in other jets. They're, uh, but you know, the next stage, I think once sales begin to move out internationally, um, as much as I can comment on these things, you yep, know, yep. service centers uh, are going to be part of the, the Eclipse landscape and how do we get information out to owners and uh, pilots uh, in a timely manner and service their aircraft. Uh, 
And I assume your team, or you're supporting the team that's writing a lot of these applications. I see there's a lot of custom application development in-house. Yes, there is. Yes, it's uh, we develop our own software. Um, our test pilots fly it, and um, let's see, our engineers also, you know, then they go through the whole cycle again. Yeah, it's got to work, right? It's like so I said, 41,000 feet at 500 miles an hour. Yeah, you don't I mean, want the blue screen of death popping up on the console. Uh, absolutely not. Console. And that's a, that's a real uh, feather in our cap. It is, is one of the uh, best uh, safety records um, uh, in the market. You know, I think we've got 200,000 flight hours now with uh, 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 no incidents. So, you know, this is a, a very safe, very fast uh, aircraft. And uh, the technology inside there really reduces the pilot workload. Normally, you wouldn't want to fly that fast with one person at the helm, but um, with our jet you can. Fun stuff. That's cool. I'm having a blast. Talking jets a little bit later, we're going to be talking sausages. I think we had uh, somebody on from the Vatican in the other cube, so we're, uh, we're <laughs> covering all over our bases, <laughs> which is really what we love to do. And, and more and more, uh, Steve, as we go out to these shows, we're getting to talk to the practitioners. You know, we're getting to talk to the people that have their hands on the technology, are executing the technology, delivering benefits with the technology, not just talking about speeds and feeds and this and that, because let's face it, that gets boring after a while, and it doesn't really matter unless it enables guys like you and your team to, to deliver cool products to the marketplace. So thanks for coming on theCUBE. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate it. So Appreciate we're live it. at theCUBE. Uh, VM, or excuse me, why am I stuck on that? EMC <laughs> World 2014 will be at VMworld later this year. So thanks for uh, tuning in. We've gone wall to wall. This is day two. We've got a lot more guests lined up. So stay with us. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.